Uh... Nellis. This god-off location that just has way too freaking big. I mean, I, I know it's an airbase and everything, and... Yeah, air bases are big, they've got to take up a lot of space, but the amount of running back and forth that you have to do here at Nellis just to get from one location to another, I tell you, by far, one of the most annoying things. But I'm not here to complain, you guys are here to watch me enjoy Fallout, even though I'm doing more running back and forth than I want to. Jeez, that's all I seem to do these days, complain. Anyways, um, I need to chat with Mother Pearl now. Because she is, uh... Well, I mean, I, I raised the bomber. I need to tell her about this, so... Pearl! Hey, don't walk away from me. Pearl! Hello, friend. How can Mother Pearl be of help today? Well, Pearl, I come bearing good news. However, I do want to talk about something a little bit less serious first. Uh, it involves Jack. Loyal's apprentice. He's interested in a girl. Well, well, this is welcome news. Who is she? She's named Janet. Works for the Crimson Caravan. She's with those traitors? They've tried to contact us before, but I'm not interested in trading with greedy savages. This presents a bit of a problem. Jack isn't allowed to leave Nellis, and I doubt she would make it through the artillery alive. Pearl, don't tell me you're going to trounce young love. I mean... It would mean a lot to Jack if she could come to Nellis. But you're the only one who can allow it. Hmm. I suppose Jack deserves a chance at love. You can tell Jack she has a free pass to enter, but he is responsible for her actions. Do not make me regret this decision, outsider. Trust me, Pearl. No trouble will come out of this. Um, but on to more pressing matters. It turns out the ballasts worked. The B-29 is at the surface, ready to go. Extraordinary child. Go tell Loyal, then return to me. Have you seen her? The redhead of my dreams? Uh, yeah, Jack. That's actually why I'm here. I have good news for you. She feels the same way about you. She does? You mean it? That's incredible. What happens next? Can she come here? How do we make sure she doesn't get blown up? Should I talk to the gunners, or to Pearl? <laughs> just, just slow down there, Jack. I already spoke to Pearl. She's given it the green light. But Janet is going to be your responsibility, and getting her past the artillery is something you're going to have to solve. Here, take this boomer outfit. I'll let the gunners know she's coming, and not to shoot at her. Hmm. All right, then. It's going to be a dream come true once you've raised that bomber from Lake Mead. <laughs> oh, Loyal. It's not a matter of when. It's already done. Your plan worked. Much to my surprise, the plane floated right up. Intact. Didn't break apart. That's tremendous. I'll transmit instructions to the robots to start packing up the plane to bring it back to Nellis. Uh, whoa, wait a minute. How exactly do you plan to get the plane back here? I just told you. The robots are going to handle it. They'll break the plane down into pieces and move it up from Colville Bay in one shot. And I assume you're planning to use a diversionary tactic, right? A way to draw attention away from what you're actually doing, so that you can slip the plane back here, albeit in pieces, unnoticed. Exactly. We'll be shelling an unoccupied location in outer Vegas to get their attention elsewhere. By the time they realize they aren't under attack, the plane and the bots will be long gone. The kids wish we were shelling a real target, but Pearl thinks it's wise not to start up a war just as the lady has risen. Well, Pearl's definitely not mistaken. You don't want the entire Mojave after you. I'm pretty sure that's everything I can do for you right now, isn't it? Thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come true. I hope you enjoy putting her together. Hey, I better get rolling. Jack and I have a lot of work ahead of us. That's a good thing to see, huh, boss? Uh, <laughs> Raul, uh... What on earth are you talking about? That loyal guy. He's getting up there in years but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. If you ask me, that's better than withering away all alone or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. Well, Loyal's using his years of knowledge. That's about the best way that he can help his tribe now. Sure, he's not young anymore, but that's what the old have over the young. Knowledge and experience. 
He's putting his skills to use the best way possible, and in a way that fits his abilities, as well as his age. Yeah, that's what I thought too. What's on your mind? You wouldn't have stopped me to talk about this without a reason. Old history, boss. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm, with a house for three generations of Tejadas. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands, with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody, but I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Go on. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. Oh God, Raul, you didn't kill them. What happened next? About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelt the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister Rafaela out through a window. But everyone else, my parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters, all died. Jesus. Well, then what happened? Rafaela and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home, but I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. Raul, don't tell me that you blame yourself for what happened. Something so radically out of your control. Maybe. I don't know. All I know is that for all my skills with a pistol, I couldn't help them. Anyway, that was weighing on my mind. Thanks for letting me get it out in the open, boss. Kinda heavy. If that's all that you needed to talk about, then... Okay. Let's, uh... Let's get moving. Hello, friend. How can Mother Pearl be of help today? Hey, Pearl. I've spoken to Loyal, and the B-29 is on its way. What you have done for us is a miracle, child. You have fulfilled the only dreams we ever had outside our walls. You are a trusted friend of us all. If there is ever a way for us to help you, child, tell me, and I will make it so. Well... Actually, Pearl, it's one of the reasons why I went through the trouble of befriending you, doing all of these chores in the first place. There's going to be a battle in the near future, at Hoover Dam. In order for the right side to be victorious, I need your support. Of course, my child. After all that you have done for us, we would love to help you in the upcoming battle. After all the training and virtual reality, the young ones would relish an opportunity to put their skills to battle. We'll be there when you need us. Thank you, Pearl. This will be tremendously helpful. Now, before the battle, there are other things that I have to prep. So, I'll see you later. Bye. Oh my god. I cannot believe how fast the freaking flowers around here grow. By far, the Crimson Caravan has to be the number one place where I've been able to collect tons of Brock flower. Um, I think that I've collected all of it, too. Just want to check over here. Yep, sure enough. Some of these over next to uh, the women's barracks. And uh, with that done, now I can finally uh, go ahead and talk with Janet. Even though there was no real good reason to f collect all those flowers, because I really don't need them. I'm oversupplied as it is, but, you know. Hello again. How's your boomer friend? Oh, he's doing well, Janet. And he's actually the reason why I'm here. I have good news for you. I was hoping you would. What's going on? Have they agreed to my safety yet? They have. I have a boomer uniform here. All you have to do is wear it, and you can cross over to Nellis. They won't shoot at you. There's one more thing. I have a work contract with the Crimson Caravan, and if I walk away, I lose the wages they owe me. 
Could you do just one more thing for me and talk to Alice McLafferty about it? I know if I do it, she'll just say no. I'd hate to lose the money. <sighs> this is one part of the quest that I completely forgot. Ugh, it's never ending, the challenge. <sighs> Young hearts. I mean, this... Ugh. For, yeah, I mean, if it's not one thing, it's another. Went around, back and forth, and then all of a sudden she's like, Oh, get me my wages. Alice. Welcome back. Hi, Alice. Um, I just want to ask a couple of questions about work contracts. Are they common for the Crimson Caravan Company? Most merchant companies, successful merchant companies, rather, have them. It can be inconvenient to replace employees on short notice. The contracts keep employees around for a specific duration of time, after which they get paid. After their upkeep and expenses are deducted, of course. Upkeep and expenses? What does that encompass? Food, water, living quarters, medicine and clothes, just the basic stuff. It all comes out of the company's coffers. Seems a lot to me like the companies are getting the better end of the deal. That's because we are. We always pay up when the contract ends, though. Won't stay in business long if you've got a reputation as a cheat. True. But it seems to disproportionately favor the company. Are work contracts legal? Yes. And they have been for decades now. The hired hands know what they're signing up for. We don't hide anything with fancy talk. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Uh, there is something else I need to ask you about. Janet, one of your employees, she's asked me to talk to you about releasing her from her contract. Ah, yes. Her infatuation with a boomer she's never met. It's a small camp. More gets around. She's aware she's breaking her contract, which is undoubtedly why she sent you to talk to me instead of coming herself. Janet is free to leave, but she forfeits the wages she's owed. That's the price of contract breaking. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Alice. Given that you're running the entire branch of the Crimson Caravan Company's New Vegas operation, I had you pegged for someone who could see an opportunity when it was coming up to bite you. Opening up trade with the Boomers would be a lot easier with Janet in their camp, wouldn't you agree? And she would be more inclined to put in a good word and push for a trade route with the Crimson Caravan if she left a happy employee. You see the logic in that, right? Intriguing. Janet puts in a good word for me, and the Crimson Caravan gains exclusive access to the Boomers. Yes, it works for me. Janet will be paid what she's owed. Consider it a gift. Have you spoken with McLafferty yet? Uh, yes, I have. And you're lucky that you sent me to deal with it. I've convinced her to pay you what you're owed. At the cost of you pushing for a Crimson Caravan trade deal with the Boomers. From the inside. Just do what you can. But outside of that, you can get your money, and you're free to leave. That's great! I can't believe you went through all this trouble for me. Thank you. McCready! It's been a while. McCready! The Ranger vets are on their way from Baja. Never seen one before. But I heard they chew nails and spit napalm. Uh, that's great, but let's talk. I gotta admit, I'm impressed. The misfits are drilling better than I ever expected. Well... I'm also surprised, McCready. I didn't think that I could whip any shape into that bunch. Uh, but since I managed to whip some shape into some of your worst soldiers, I'm thinking that maybe you could scratch my back a little bit here. Captain Gillis at Bitter Springs. Needs reinforcements bad. You can spare some troops, right? Given what I've done for you? After what you did getting my misfits whipped into shape? Yeah, I could spare a couple boys for Bitter Springs. I'll issue the dispatch orders. Thanks much, McCready. Now, I have uh, more work to do elsewhere, but I salute you. Yeah, whatever. Oh, look. It's the heavy troopers. They look like they're what? from the Brotherhood, but they're not. This has got to be the dumbest thing ever. What they did to these power armor outfits, these T-45Ds. The, they've stripped all the servo gears out of this po freaking power armor. And... What is he doing? Anyway, the, 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 they stripped all the servos out, so it's no longer easy to wear. It's like wearing overly heavy armor that doesn't stand up on its own. Talk about dumb. Anyways, Plotly. I didn't expect someone as famous as you to be here. Please tell me you're here to help. Well, I wish I was, Major, but I'm really here because Bitter Springs needs reinforcements. And I've uh, done a whole lot of work to help you out around the camp here. 
I'm hoping you'll be able to shuffle a couple of the troops that way. You know you can spare it. I'll be honest. The Legion has me worried here, but I think I can spare some soldiers. Consider your request granted. Thanks much, Major. And I wish you the best with the Legion. But now, I need to be on my way. Watch yourself out there. Yep, I will. Um, ooh, I need to talk to Sterling before I leave. The Ranger vets are on their way from Baja. Never seen one before. But I heard they chew nails and spit napalm. Took some skills to bring down that fiend. You done good. Oh, are you talking about Nefi or Motor Runner? Uh, you know what? Doesn't matter. Thanks. Um... Sterling, is there any chance that you've seen anything suspicious going on around here? As a matter of fact, it's funny that you'd ask. A couple nights back, I was on watch in the yard. Got myself a habit of looking all around, not just where I'd expect to find trouble. Old habit, but it saved my hide on occasion. Round about one in the morning, I spied some lights in the control tower. Now that's the third time I've spied those lights, mind you. And every time I ask about it, they tell me the place was empty. I'm just saying, it didn't look empty to me. Thanks for the information. I might look into it. No trouble at all. Might be nothing. Couple frisky young folks looking for a quiet place to snuggle up. That light is mighty consistent. Always there at 1am. Might be worth a look. Will do, Sterling. Uh, before I go, I'm a little bit curious. Have you always been with First Recon? Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Huh. Uh, well, why did you leave the rangers? Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waist on any more long scouts either. You're still alive though. How'd you manage to get out after what they did to your hands and feet? Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Huh. Well, you're definitely a soldier. Still be doing this job after having that done to you. Well, anyway. It's always nice having a chat with you, Sterling, but I've got other things to do. You stay well. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Ugh, boss. Are you trying to destroy my knees even faster than nature? Got a second to talk, boss? Oh? Raul? Something on your mind? Meeting Corporal Sterling? Well, it kinda got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service. But instead, he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? Well... I think that it's good that he's devoted to his duty. There aren't a lot of people like him these days. You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. Well, you're talking about the Great War again. Something else you need to get off your chest? After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaqueros. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick rider. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bombs. Well, wasn't Mexico City basically annihilated in the Great War? I don't think it was as hard hit as DC or Bakersfield, but it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters, already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, 
the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. Sounds pretty bad. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the Vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know? And wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed for the first time since the bombs had fallen. You find happiness where you can. Wasn't it dangerous, though? To wear such a flamboyant outfit during such... anarchy? It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble, but most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me, but my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while it seemed like we might even survive there, until... Until Rafaela. That's right. You're on your own now. What happened to Rafaela, Raul? She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at our camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. Jesus. Raul, I... That's terrible. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. So what'd you do then? I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by, and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old Vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel, so I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's another story, boss. Huh. All right, Raul. Pretty heavy. Let's, uh... Let's get moving. Never expected someone as famous as you to turn up here. What can I do for you? Well, Captain, I returned with great news. I visited McCarran, Golf, and Forlorn Hope. Turns out that they're all sending you reinforcements. Things should be a whole lot better at this point, right? Thanks to your help, I think Bitter Springs has a real shot at surviving. I can't offer much of a reward, but know that the NCR is very grateful. Well, I didn't go helping a refugee camp because I thought I would get much of anything out of it. I did this because it was the right thing to do. I don't need a reward. You just make certain that these refugees stay healthy and well-fed. That's very generous of you. I appreciate it. Hello. It's great to finally meet you. Hi there. It's great to meet you as well. I'm glad you made it out here. You're even more stunning up close than you were at a distance. And you're even more handsome up close. Do you think it'll be okay if I hang around here for a little while, so we can get to know each other better? Of course it would. I'll have you set up with some quarters with some of the other women. Hey. Um, Jack, let's talk. Thank you for getting Janet to Nellis. I've never been so happy in my entire life. I'm happy to have helped, Jack. I wish you two the best. And now, I think I'll let you two have some alone time. You probably want to get to know each other. I'll be on my way. Don't get blown up. I've heard that we're getting strong reinforcements to help us civilize the territories. Oh God. Fun, fun quotes that they're just starting to spout off all the time now. 
Anyways, we are completely done with Nellis now. Uh, with that done, it's, uh, it's off back into the wasteland. I think... Uh, yeah, this is the way to go. What I need to do now is basically head into New Vegas and start making some really, really important decisions about the way that the end game is going to play out. Not a whole lot left for me to do at this point, but nonetheless, some of the best stuff is left to happen. And, uh, basically, I am down to one outcome, three decisions. It's either House, the Republic, or myself. Which one am I gonna choose? Well, you'll have to wait to find out.